Okay, so today we're going to do a flight from Toronto International Airport to Buffalo, New York. And we're going to be flying the MD-82. I did a video on this earlier on a cold start from an MD-82. But I've added a few new cool utilities on this flight. So let me just summarize. Uh, first of all, you can see in the background some planes moving around. That comes from a plug-in called live traffic and those are actual flights in real time well maybe a 90 second delay or something on flights that are actually coming and going from toronto international airport so i really like this utility that uh, gives you a, a sense of real life flights and traffic moving about the airport <clears throat> now it all does create problems for you because when you get clearance from air traffic control for taxing etc you're actually going to run into real flights that are on the same, have clearance for the same taxiway that you're using, but it just adds a little bit to the drama of, of leaving the airport and uh, adds a, a little bit of interest. So we're going to do a cold start from the MD-82. And there's some other utilities that are going to talk about. and. One of them is Pilot to ATC, which is a very nice utility that uh, really just enhances your flying experience uh, astronomically because it allows you to not only do voice communication with ATC, but it has all kinds of features for flight planning, tracking your flight, and it is in sync with your database and your um, MIS. So. I'll be mentioning a little bit on that a late, little later and show you some of the features of why you really want to have this as part of your utilities for in flying. So let's get in the cockpit now of the MD-82. And as you can see, it is really a cold, dark start. And it's pitch black in the cockpit. You can't see a thing. So uh, one of the utilities that you'll find in your menu up here is... Um, an aviation flashlight and if you're doing a cold start in the dark you need something to uh, get started because you don't have any power you don't have any lights so just turn on your aviation uh, light here and then we're going to use a checklist for starting this uh, uh, MD-82 from a cold start so looking at the plugins up here, another plugin is a handy one is a checklist parking brake so this brings up the checklist for the MD-82 and the first thing of course is ensuring on. that the parking brake is battery on. master the battery master you need your aviation flashlight to find it here uh, but the battery master is right here so we need to turn that on all right on the, the engine, engine start startup pump, pump over here on APU master start A APU then run master. okay the APU uh, master switch is right here it's a three-way toggle switch so you not only throw the switch but you actually have to hold it down until you get a bit of uh, power generated up for the uh, APU and then you can let it go and we'll check. check that off now you have to wait, wait for, for APU power the, available this light illumination to, to come on before you go, continue check. with the checklist APU left bus so the APU left bus is the next thing now I probably shouldn't be doing this in the dark because following the aviator flashlight is is difficult for anyone to follow but the, uh, the APU bus is right next to the APU power available here so we'll turn that on. All right. So now we're getting a little bit of light. And we'll turn on. turn the right bus APU on. APU right bus. All right. And you can hear on. the APU starting left up. Left generator. The left generator is just a little bit up from here. And this is actually in the way. We'll just move that over there. APU left generator on the right generator right generator on 
APU, bleed, air. Okay, the next thing is to APU bleed, but before we do that, uh, now that we've got some power, let's turn up our lights a little bit so that we can get rid of our flashlight. So some of the lighting controls for the MD-82 are located right down here on the pilot side, just on the left-hand side, and we can bring up a little bit of lighting here and hopefully get rid of our flashlight for the rest of it here. We'll get rid of that flashlight there. All right, so the um, APU bleed air right up here is called air. Put that on. The no pneumatic on. cross valves, they're pneumatic located cross in valves. a little bit of a difficult place to access. They're right down here. Put those up. Open. And uh, that was auxiliary transfer pump. Hard to find. This one is even harder to find. It's located over on the co-pilot side, right here. It's <laughs> like I said. This on. plane is a little more Left difficult to start on. than a lot of the planes in XP11. But um, uh, if you follow the checklist and learn where things are, then you just follow the checklist and things will go correctly. So, left pumps on. Check. Center pumps. Center fuel pumps. On. Right fuel pumps. On. Right pumps on. Check. Engine start system. All right, so when you're using the engine start system, you can choose either A or B. They're redundant systems. It's sort of if one system isn't working, you can use the other. So we'll select A. Select A or B. Right engine. All right, so now we're ready to start the plane. But before we do that, let's uh, load the plane and load the passengers and... Uh, get ready to uh, take off. So uh, normally you don't start your engines while you're sitting in the gate. So first thing you want to do is to load the planes. Now there's a little um, another plug-in that you can use which um, brings up the service vehicles for your plane. So you can see now all the service vehicles moving into place. And one of the things on the uh, MD-82 is it has cargo go doors here. So you can open the cargo doors. And you can see that actually on the outside here. see the uh, cargo doors are opened and packages are actually being loaded into the plane. All right, so while the plane is being loaded up, then we want to do some of the other things in preparation for, for departure. I want to introduce at this time the pilot to ATC, and uh, it's a little utility that once you start using it, you really wonder how you can used to fly without it. But uh, it acts as um, a really assistant for both planning routes, for uh, talking directly to ATC, uh, and it has all kind of functions and features with it. I'm not going to do a review on the ATC, pilot to ATC, but I'm just going to show you how to use it. So the first thing, of course, is you need to connect. This thing. Toronto Pearson INTL Information Victor. 1000 Zulu weather. Wind 230 at 6 variable 200 to 260. Visibility more than 10. Sky conditions 3000 scattered, 16000 broken, 26000 broken. Temperature minus 2, dew point minus 9. Altimeter 3009. Arriving runways 24 left, 23. Departing runways 24 right, 23. Advise on initial contact you have, Victor. All right. So when you first connect uh, 
push the connect button on Pilot to ATC, it actually connects to the airport that you're at and gives you the ATIS information, which is actually real information and in real time is what's happening currently at the airport. So from the ATIS information, then you know what runways are active for departure and for arrival and also what the current barometric pressure is and what the weather conditions are at the airport. Hey so or sorry, uh, Clarence Air Canada 704, it's, it's very uh, useful for, for, uh, for, uh, for that the because then it allows you to plan so your route using real uh, up-to-date information in real time. And uh, planning your route is very simple using Pilot to ATC. Uh, all you do is put in a waypoint of the airport that you're leaving from. Put in your destination airport, Plans which is KBUF. Sorry, KBUF, which is Buffalo, and then you can push the auto plan route here. Now the auto plan. Uh, should use the current active runways but in case it doesn't um, you can uh, put in the SIDS and the stars and the approach patterns based on the information that you know from ATIS what the active runways are all right so we've got here a basic flight plan loaded now and um, what we want to do is check the departure Clark, runways. All right, so it's got uh, runway 23, which is which is an active runway according to the ATIS information we got. The uh, SID we wanted was the CAP2, and you can tell that just by looking at the flight plan that it created here you can see that it put in kept the two and we want the Wolsey transition so it's already it's already loaded that into the plan but in the event that your active runway is different from the flight plan there that it creates uh, you can load the stars and SIDS from the program uh, you'll notice in the background you'll hear uh, air ATC chatter and, and it's real voices and uh, that always makes the flight more realistic when based on uh, what you're connected to whether it's the departure or the control towers or the approach you're getting real traffic uh, voice communication on those same channels which uh, basically helps you in terms of hearing uh, <laughs> traffic chatter so that when you're actually connected to a network like VATSIM or one Clear of the other networks um, you're used to hearing uh, air traffic control chatter because one of the things when you're starting to fly is being able to understand what it is that air traffic control is communicating and being able to repeat it and understand exactly what the instructions are and that takes a lot of practice and listening so having live chatter going on as you're flying really helps you in terms of tuning your ear to what what communication uh, should is appropriate for communicating with the air traffic control anyhow enough said about that we've got a flight plan loaded in here now and we're going to come into uh, runway 23 at Buffalo and we're uh, on the departure runway 23 so we've got departing runway 23 and arriving runway 23 so what we want to do now is file this with air traffic control. <clears throat> you can create your own uh, flight plan. All right, so it's telling me that it, it, it can't calculate the top of descent because I don't have a correct altitude in here. I think what it's saying is because of the short distance, uh, we're not going to be able to reach 12,000 feet. So let's uh, reduce that. Uh, to 7,000 and see if it likes that. 
All right, so I'm not getting any errors on that, so let's uh, refile that flight plan. And this time it likes it. So once you have your flight plan loaded, you'll see that it turns green up here, indicating that it's validated and that it's also filed. Then you can export that to uh, your as you can see, there's all kinds of uh, flight simulators that you can export your plan to. And we'll explore, export it to X-Plane 11. So now the, the fl plan is located. So before we load it into our flight management system or MIS system, uh, let's look a little bit at this here on the different uh, views you can get. You can get a chart layout here for VFR flying which has all of the information and the classes of the airports, whether they're A, B, C, D, E, whatever, for visual flight, uh, as well as information. And you can also get a view here that shows you the cities and uh, basic information on, uh, on the map. So that's helpful, particularly if you're flying VFR, et cetera, you can get your landmarks from there. And then also you can show the street view, which shows you the major highways and things. And it also has the high frequencies and the low frequencies for, for navigation. So it's a pretty comprehensive system. And uh, basically, I like the sat view for, for flying. It just makes it easier to tell where you are and where you're going. So enough of that. Let's go back into the cockpit and uh, continue prepping the plane for departure. So this is our plane over here and as you can see that there's uh, some real traffic taking place at the airport in real time. And you can see all the flights here coming in and going from Toronto International Airport. So <laughs> it's, it's always a challenge when you're in a busy airport like this where real flights are being displayed is actually getting in and out without running into anything. Going back into the cockpit. All right, so uh, we're not quite ready to start the engines yet. Let's just do a little prep work here before we uh, push back. So, uh, let's load our flight plan. We uploaded that from using the pilot to ATC, and now we want to input it into our flight management system. So it was the Toronto to Buffalo one here. And we'll put in our flight number. And I like to check the legs before I actually put in the altitude because if there's something in the legs that is uh, hindering continuity of the flight then putting in an altitude will just give you an error and you have to put it in again anyhow. So you can see from takeoff here on runway 23 uh, the air traffic control is actually going to give you vectors give you direction of on takeoff to your first waypoint here, Sever. But for our purposes, let's uh, put that in direct so that uh, the flight plan has continuity to it and, in this, and uh, gives you a, a straight continuity on your plan. So we'll go to the next page. And everything else looks good. So now let's put in our cruise altitude, which is 7,000 feet. And we've got no problems. All right, so let's uh, prep our autopilot now. We'll put on the flight director. Now this little uh, panel here tells you exactly what the autopilot is set for. So currently it's not on the flight management system. When we get airborne, we'll push the FMS here to uh, lock into the flight management system, which will follow the waypoints we've pro programmed into the computer. But for now, we want to set our altitude that our cruising speed is going to be 7,000. 
when you get airborne, you've got a lot of things on the go, so you want to set these things ahead of time. And we'll set the speed, initial speed that we want to hold that is 250. We'll put that up there. And our takeoff is from runway uh, 23, so we'll put our heading here is 230 just in case the can't lock into the autopilot or the uh, management system on takeoffs and ensuring that we have our heading set correctly or fairly close. All right, so we have uh, basically uh, the main thing set that we want to set. Uh, if our that's okay, we'll put on our taxi lights now so that we have some light up there. We can send these things away for the ground services and uh, they should start to move out of position here. So this is a you know it's just a useful little utility that you can get for ground services which makes, Get more realistic experience on getting your plane outfitted for departure with the food services, the loading the luggage, etc. And once the ground service is clear, we're, we can, in the meantime, we can file our flight plan. In fact, uh, you can file your flight plan quite a bit before you're ready for pushback. Uh, I have a brother-in-law that's a pilot with Air Canada, and he says they're in the cockpit usually an hour before they leave, just going over the charts, the flight plans, programming the computer, setting things up. So you can file your flight plan uh, pretty early and then do the cockpit preparations for pushback. So one of the things that we have now with Pilot ATC is that you can use your real voice communication and uh, that's always uh, helpful. It also has the option of having your co-pilot read back instructions from their traffic control and for learning that's very useful because sometimes you get quite lengthy instructions from air traffic controller and trying to remember them to read back correctly is a challenge if you're not used to it so uh, we've got uh, a combination that we're going to use on this flight the pilot has to give some specific instructions to air traffic control and then the co-pilot will automatically read back uh, instructions and also automatically tune the radios for you so it uh, gives you a more of a realistic flight of what a co-pilot might do on a flight and it also helps you in being able to concentrate on flying the plane all right let's uh, let's file our flight plan american 587 ready to copy ifr clearance american 587 is cleared to kilo bravo uniform foxtrot climb via the kepta2 departure with the WOZ transition, then as filed. Expect departure runway 23. Maintain 7,000 feet. Departure on 127.57 squawk 3631. American 587 is cleared to Kilo Bravo Uniform Foxtrot. Climb via the Kepta 2 departure, with the WOZ transition, then as filed. Maintain 7,000 feet. Departure on 127.57 Squawk 3631. American 587 read back correct. Altimeter 3001 contact ground on 119.1 when ready for pushback have a good one. Altimeter 3001 ground on 119.1 American 587. All right, so you can see that we contacted air traffic control using our real voice and requesting IFR clearance. We got quite a lengthy readback from air traffic control confirming our flight plan, confirming the uh, active runway for departure, and also giving us a squat code and the current altimeter barometric pressure. So 
Uh, those are all things, and uh, the co-pilot read back those things automatically for you so that you didn't have to remember them, but you just had to act on the uh, commands that were being given to you. So I think we're ready for pushback now. So now the pushback, we're going to act, ask air traffic control for pushback. Now, I guess we have to clear the vehicles behind us first of all. So, uh, we have to bring up this uh, utility again about uh, ground services and hide the traffic behind us. All right. American, oh, sorry, we haven't started our flight yet, but we're ready for pushback. American 587, ready for pushback. American 587 pushback approved. Pushback approved, American 587. Hello, Air Canada 1250, ground runway 24 right, information whiskey, altimeter 3020, taxi Delta 3, Charlie, tower 1835. Push cart coming. All right, so while uh, the cart is pushing us back, let's go ahead and start our engines. Quite often you start your engines at the time that you're being pushed back. Uh, so we'll go ahead and continue the checklist that we were working on before. Here we go. Okay, left the Romeo. 431, give way to two, going into the ramp in front at Romeo. The second one's uh, an Airbus 320 under tow. Parking brake. Okay, uh, uh, All right, so, so uh, rather than going through this checklist again, because uh, <laughs> it doesn't allow you to start in the middle of it, uh, we're going to just start from uh, uh, down here. Um, we're starting the engines. Now, in this uh, order here, it has you starting the engines and then uh, putting, uh, moving the fuel control lever. However, since we don't have two hands, um, I like to put the fuel levers up first, uh, and that way um, it actually uh, works. So these are the fuel levers here. We put those okay, on. Okay, give me a second to clear. All right, so that's uh, putting the fuel the uh, fuel levers on here. So now we're ready to start you, the Air engine. Canada, four zero three, give way to the company Ember number two off the right side there. Okay, the so the let's start the right engine, Ember, which is the here. Okay, that's three. All right, thank you, Ember. And you hold that down until uh, the engine starts up. And you can see here that some of the uh, dials are, are moving the right up here. You at the intersection. Thanks, Jeff, not so you have to hold that down to start the engine. And then you can release it after the engine starts. And the same on the left engine. Ground runway 248, information with key ultimate 3020, taxi Bravo Charlie. And you can see the Four dial three start three to three kick three up three on the three left Bravo. engine. Charlie, wish at 2702. EGT. All right, so now our engines are started. So the next thing we have to do is actually shut down the APU since we're on engine power now. And uh, so we uh, started up our engines. And the next thing it's asking for is the engine start pump, which is over here. And we want to um, put that to off. All right, and then the AC bus tie up here. We want to put that to auto. Then the APU bus left, we put that to off. APU bus right, put that to off. Uh, 
All right, and then the APU bleed air, you put that to off, which is here. And then the APU master, you put Grand that to off. Good day, Georgia. Uh, 7284 short delta tango. All right, so now we're running on uh, seat belt sign. We're running on the engine power. So we want to put the seat belt sign on next. You want to check your elevator trim for takeoff at 10 degrees. So uh, just check your elevator trim here, and it's set for 10 degrees, which is good. That's important to check that because sometimes um, on sometimes uh, elevator it isn't trim. set, and you need to manually set, set that. Set for takeoff, 10 degrees. The flap set Flaps. to 15 degrees. One of the nice things about the MD82 is when you have things set up correctly Sorry, here, you're going to see the, off the plane just right lifts off itself at precisely the right speed. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to pull back on the yoke at all. You just put on the throttle and let it take off. And uh, that's a beauty about uh, the plane is you don't have to worry about the takeoff speed so much because when you have things set here correctly it automatically takes off set 15 uh, degrees all right so flight controls the flight controls checked well, that's just checking speed your bugs. yoke etc now this tells you exactly what the takeoff speeds are here and these little speed bugs here you can set down here we're not going to take the time to do that today but you can see that uh, the V2 is at about 140 knots, and then the flaps up at 150. So uh, we've got our nose taxi light on already. Our transponder should be on standby, which it is. And we need to just set the pitot heat now, which is this right here. And set it to capped. All right. And the parking brake is already off from our taxi. All right, so we're ready for taxi now. And this is where the uh, captain will request uh, air traffic control for taxi to the runway. American 587 requesting taxi to runway 23. American 587 taxi to runway 23 via taxiways Alpha Mike, Alpha, Hotel, hold short runway 23. Taxi to runway 23 via taxiways Alpha Mike, Alpha, Hotel, hold short runway 23 American 587. All right, so finding the taxiways on a large airport are very intimidating, and there's a couple of utilities that can help you do that. Uh, one of them is a plug-in called uh, Airport ES, and if you turn that on, um, it shows you the layout of the runway and all the markings here, so that when you're given back instructions, like Alpha Mike, Alpha Hotel, etc. You can plot your traffic way on here by just checking where you are, you know, and uh, we're actually going to runway 23, which is down here. So, uh, you can, uh, using the instructions that were given to you by air traffic control, you can plot um, something on here, and it's it's a very useful utility. However, if you're flying with pilot to air traffic control, it has its own uh, utility for plotting your runway. So, all you have to do on here is click on taxi. And there you have it. It shows you the route to follow right to your departure there. So <laughs> you can't you can't beat that. And uh, all you have to do is follow your plane along, which moves in real time to the map. So uh, we're just gonna. Uh, I won't go through the whole taxi procedures there, but uh, we'll just start out with taxing, <clears throat> just to show you that. Uh, with live traffic, you actually run into 
live traffic when you're taxing quite often and so uh, it can be <laughs> it can be quite interesting sometimes when you're taxing to take off I like to uh, you know I like to usually uh, fly in the early morning or evening when you have lights that show you your taxiway because when you're flying in the daytime it's even harder to navigate your way around the airport yeah, but at least uh, with lights uh, you can it helps you in following your taxi so as you can see we've got quite a bit of traffic ahead of you, us and, and that is actually real traffic in real time and uh, 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 because we have no way of controlling them and the air traffic controller in the sim simulator doesn't doesn't control real traffic you kind of just have to go by whatever is going now there is an option to turn off um, the real traffic when you're actually taxing but I think it's it's always fun to see real traffic uh, and quite often uh, you'll find that you're actually running into it or it's running into you but that's uh, it just makes uh, flying uh, more interesting when you know that these are actual real planes and real aircraft now uh, live traffic it has those yellow markers on it to identify the actual flight number you can turn those off but quite often it's hard to see planes if, if there's not a yellow traffic so don't I like to keep them on just so that I know thing. where the traffic is all right so we're we're going to um, uh, just pause currently until we uh, get ready for at the runway for takeoff but as you can see this uh, plug-in for real traffic really makes flying exciting combined with the real uh, air traffic control communication that's chatter that's happening in the background that you get eventually you get your ear tuned to and you understand uh, the proper communication with air traffic controller all right we'll can pick it up as we're ready for takeoff okay as you can see on the, while we're taxing here there's a real plane in front of us in real time that's uh, ready for takeoff on the uh, same runway as us because we get real live information from ATIS um, we also get real traffic uh, and real runways that flights are currently landing and taking off on so you'll find that flights quite or the planes often just disappear or suddenly <laughs> appear and this is a beta version of live traffic but it really makes uh, flying a, a lot more interesting when you see real traffic in front of you and uh, we're getting close now to so runway 23 which is what we're scheduled for for departure and the uh, uh, air traffic control will, will soon get a hold of us from the ground and tell us to switch our, uh, to tower for takeoff uh, you can see a plane just landed in, fr in front of us there so the active runway uh, is being used for both takeoff and landing it appears and just to show you that uh, on the pilot to ATC you can see we're approaching the runway here all right so we're getting close to where air traffic controller is going to turn us over to the tower for departure American 587 contact tower on 118.35 have a good morning tower on 118.35 American 587 and uh, that is we need to set our right at the end and transponder the here right at the end of our to XPDR so that they can fl track you on the flight know your altitude direction etc and other than that um, we've got our passenger seatbelt signs are still on so we're right, good on that Whoa, <laughs> we, we, we left our cargo doors open. That's a big no-no. 
You'll have big trouble if you're taking off with your cargo doors open. All right, we should have closed those up before we started taxing. Yeah, before we actually pushed back. All right, we're ready to go. So let's uh, ask uh, Tower for clearance. American 587, ready for departure on runway 23. American 587 winds are 150 at 7 knots cleared for takeoff, runway 23. Cleared for takeoff, runway 23 American 587. All right, we put on our lights for takeoff. Now let's hope we don't run into a real life plane on takeoff here. All right, so as I mentioned previously, uh, this plane, once we've got the flap set in the correct position, we have the airlines set correctly here. We're ready for takeoff. The plane will just lift off automatically at the correct speed. And as you can see, a real plane just land, <laughs> landed on top of us. <laughs> That's one of the problems with uh, the live traffic is that we don't have control over it, but it makes flying interesting. And you can see the plane lifted off by itself when we hit the uh, takeoff speed of about 130, 140 knots. That sound is just letting you know you need to retract your landing gear, which we've done. All right, we've got our landing gears up. Let's uh, throw on our autopilot and we'll hit the FMS button. So now you'll see here that it's locked onto the American nav track. American 587 turn left heading 168, then intercept course to Sauver then is filed. However, uh, Heading sure 168 to Sauver then has filed American 587. Locked in very quickly because because the plane will tend to go to, uh, <coughs> tend to uh, lose altitude soon after takeoff if you don't. So we got the request from the air traffic controller for our first waypoint there. And since we already have that waypoint programmed into our flight management system, uh, you can, can see that uh, we've uh, taken over with the flight management system and it's automatically heading to the correct destination. So uh, let me just bring up this map here just to show that. So you can see now that the flight management system is locked in correctly on course and you can track it uh, along here. It's useful to have a second monitor that you can move that onto so that uh, you can track your flight and see your controls on your plane at the same time monitor them american 587 contact toronto departure on 128.8 have a good one departure on 128.8 american 587 so you can see that our control departure american 587 climbing to 7000 feet American 587, good morning. Radar contact. American 587, slow to 250 knots or less. Wilco American 587. 
All right, so we forgot to throw on American the auto throttle. American 5 Expedite Speed Reduction to 250 knots. We'll go American 587. And you can see we're got it up to about 275 knots. So right after takeoff, one of the things you want to do is lock in your altitude vertical speed climb as well as throw the auto throttle to hold your speed so that the air traffic controller doesn't give you grief. Uh, but then we're currently, we're just back on course again, and uh, the co-pilot is automatically repeating the, the instructions from air traffic control, and all you have to do is concentrate on flying the plane. You can turn off, uh, using the config button here, the option for the um, co-pilot to respond to the radio and change the frequencies so that you're eventually doing everything yourself. So this is a very great learning tool because it allows you to talk using your real voice to air traffic control, to put in real requests, and air traffic control will respond, and you can tune the radio yourself. And uh, for learning, this is very helpful because you can do one thing at a time. You can take over some of the commands uh, as the captain and allow the co-pilot to repeat a lot of the commands and change the frequencies for you. And uh, so now we're just uh, continuing our flight here. And uh, there's not much more happening. There will be changing controllers quite a bit because we're changing air spaces in terms of crossing from Canada into the U.S., crossing into the U.S., um, airspace and also to the different airport at Buffalo so there's a lot of just uh, frequency control changes but I'll come back on when we're getting closer to landing okay we've crossed the border now into the US and we're uh, American 587 expect the ILS approach to runway 05 at Buffalo Niagara International Expect the ILS approach to runway 05 American 587. All right, so we've been handed off to Buffalo approach now, and we're getting close to Buffalo. One of the things I like about Pilot to ATC is it shows you where your top of descent is with a green arrow here. You're also told in time up at the top here how many minutes to your top of descent, and that's where... You, you begin your descent into the um, arrival airport. Now, we need to also know what the uh, frequency is for the approach. So it has a useful info button on the right-hand side here. It tells you the information at Buffalo here, the runways, even the gates. And we want to look at what the ILS frequency is for runway 05, because that's the runway we're going to be coming in at. And if you look up here, you'll see the frequency here is 108.5. So we want to turn tune the nav radios to 108.5. And to do that, click, simply click on the standby radio, put in 108.5. And then make that the active Charlie for Delta NAV 1. Arrival, descend one zero ten thousand runway two three. All right, so we've got our NAV 1 radio tuned now to uh, the ILS frequency for arrival. Now, one of the things you'll find here is you look here at the programming here. For you're going to fly at altitude, the cruising altitude of seven thousand feet directly to the airport, and then uh, do a transition out here to Zobso. And <laughs> making this transition out here, you notice your plan goes out here and then doesn't even have a turnaround to come back, but your plane can't turn on a dime. That's because air traffic controller is going to give you directions for the approach here from about here. They'll give you directions to fly out and around here. So it's a combination of the air traffic controller combined with your flight management system that really works well and integrates well together using the pilot to ATC. Now uh, if you only have one monitor 
uh, it's difficult to switch between your plane and uh, pilot to ATC. There is a hot key that you can set up uh, so that you can choose any key for a hot key and that automatically switches. So that, that helps in terms of uh, if you only have one monitor to operate on. Of course, it's best if you have two monitors. However, as you can see, we're getting close to the top of descent here, and we need to uh, reduce our altitude. We have a alt actually a restriction here at above uh, 4,000, so let's go ahead and program into our flight plan here that we want to reduce to 4,000. And when we get hit the uh, top of descent there, which we're really only 40 seconds out now, as you can see here, we'll want to start reducing. So let's go ahead and uh, start reducing our altitude. And we can start reducing our American speed American 587 well. descent and maintain 4,000 feet altimeter to 9 or 9 or 8 at Buffalo, Niagara International. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet American 587. All right, and I think we were given a new altitude reading there. And if you forget what they said, you can always look here at, at the uh, script that's given to you down here. All right. Uh, so American 587 turn right heading 254 vectors to the ILS approach for runway 05 at Buffalo, Niagara International descent and maintain 5,900 feet. Heading 254 vectors to the ILS approach for runway 05 descent and maintain 5,900 feet American 587. American 587 descend and maintain 4,000 feet. Descend and maintain 4,000 feet American 587. American 587 turn right heading 254. Heading 254 American 587. All right, so there you have given by the air traffic controller directions to change your heading. American 587 slow to 250 knots or less. Wilco American 587. All right, so you've been given uh, directions there from air traffic controller, and you can see, if you're looking on the map here, you can see what it, where the air traffic controller American is directing you to. American 587, turn right, heading 265. It's going to direct you out American here and then around for the approach. All right, so what you have to do, uh, remember here, is that switching from your nav to your uh, manual autopilot, uh, you have to, uh, switching from the flight management system, you need to click this FMS button here, and that changes it to heading select. So you, uh, this heading button here, you click on it and it pops in and out. It's one of the unusual things about uh, the uh, <laughs> the flight controls on this for, compared to other aircraft but if you don't do that you're in big trouble so now we're on um, setting the, the heading bug manually and we're flying the approach and you can see here from the map that the air traffic controller is going to take us out and around here connect to the ILS coming in here so our nav 1 radio has already been tuned to the proper frequency and as you can see right on here that tells you the frequency that your nav 1 is tuned to so you verify that that it's what the air traffic controller gave for directions so let's start setting up for for the uh, approach and the touchdown now and we'll turn on our Thanks, Turn on our landing lights. So we'll also put on our American 587 turn left heading 254. Heading 254 American 587. All right. So 
you can see that uh, they're wanting us to turn uh, still lining up with with the connection to this point here so that you're you're right on and then it'll give you instructions to turn towards the base here on the final so let's check our altitude to see how we're doing we're at 4,000 feet and there is an altitude restriction of 4,000 there but we've already passed that so let's go ahead and reduce our altitude for a, a better connection to the ILS approach and yeah, we'll go down to about 3,300 and that will should line us up perfectly for the ILS approach. All right, like I said, it's much better if you have a second monitor that you can keep this on uh, rather than using the keyboard shortcut. American 587 turn forth. left heading 145. Heading 145 American 587. Westjet 2755 maintain the speed 170 knots to NOAA and contact tower there 118 decimal 35. What's that NOAA 1835 there Westjet uh, Alright so you can see we're coming around here now so what we we'll want to do is reduce our speed even further, start putting down some flap, get ready for landing. And you can see our flaps coming down here. We're at about the right altitude now to catch the ILS. When we catch the ILS, you'll see the uh, reading start to show up here to show how far you are, you're off. And so you'll you'll catch the ILS readings probably when you're coming into the final here. Swift Flight 9742 heading 270 intercept cleared up. American 587 cleared for ILS to runway 05 fly heading 085 to intercept final. Cleared for ILS approach to runway 05 fly heading 085 American 587. Just verify that your NAV1 radio is tuned to the ILS runway for 05 there. Our speed is currently uh, looking not too bad. It's a little high still. We'll come down a bit farther. And we of course need to put our landing gear down. Okay, still not seeing there. You now you see that the ILS uh, approach has come on, so we can click on the VOR lock, and that'll lock us to the uh, ILS frequency. And so the plane is actually turning now and locking in on the final American 587 here. altimeter 29 or 9 or 8 at Buffalo Niagara International Contact Tower on 120.5 have a good morning altimeter 29 or 9 or 8 tower on 120.5 American 587 all right so we've been handed over the, to the tower. tower American 587 inbound for ILS approach runway 05 American 587, good morning. Radar contact. Continue ILS to runway 05, call when established on final. Continue ILS to runway 05, will call when established on final American 587. All right, so we can click the ILS button now because we're locked in on the tracking. And you can see here that this has changed to glide slope here. Now we're not 
locked in on the glide slope yet. When we actually get locked in on the glide slope, this will switch over to the right uh, here. You'll also notice here that this will come down to the center here. And when these two are in the center, that means you're locked in on the glide slope. Let's just check our altitude. We're good on the altitude. Our speed, we're tied in directly to the speed that we have in there. So that's a that's a good speed for approach. When we get closer, we'll uh, disconnect the auto throttle and land the plane manually. And as you can see on our map here, we still have a ways to go. It tells you up here on the, your Sky menu West, up here that you've actually got 15 nautical left miles. Left you're still out. And you're still Contact about five minutes from the touchdown. So <laughs> we're locked into the ILS well out. And uh, thanks to the uh, vectors given to us by the air traffic controller, it makes landing a breeze uh, using the pilot air traffic control system. And um, it shows you clearly on the map where you are. It shows you the route that the was given to you by the air traffic controller. So. So it makes, uh, makes flying and landing a breeze uh, using this system. You can land in zero visibility and have no worries about where you're going and, and uh, where you're at. It gives you plenty of time. So now we just cruise in to landing. Just check our flaps. Our flaps are set for the landing position. Uh, we're set at the right uh, speed until the final uh, few uh, feet and we're still uh, showing that we're under the glide slope here. When this uh, moves over to to the right here, uh, then we're locked in on the glide slope. Then we have to give final uh, confirmation to the tower that uh, we we're locked in and that uh, we're um, established on the final approach. So probably at about this point here, we'll get confirmation that we're established on the final. All right, so you can see that this uh, has almost reached the center here, and you'll see the glide slopes change there. So now we know that we're locked in on the final approach on the glide slope, and we can let the tower know. American 587 established on final. American 587 winds are light and variable cleared to land runway 05. Cleared to land runway 05 American 587. So the uh, tower just gave us confirmation that we're cleared to land and you can see the runway off in the distance here now. And um, we're locked in on the glide slope, so we just have to uh, let the plane come in. Our flaps are set for landing. The speed is, uh, is where we want it. So this makes uh, the air traffic control system through pilot to air traffic control where you can use your own voice. You can also uh, take the assistance of the co-pilot uh, which will read back the instructions. So it's a great uh, little learning tool for learning the proper instructions to communicate to air traffic control and also getting the feedback and being able to hear it and repeat it. Um, so you, it, you can uh, set the configuration here again that I mentioned previously that uh, for the speech you can have your uh, co-pilot respond to the radio and change the frequencies for you automatically or you can do everything yourself which is eventually what you want to do if you're flying on something like the VATSIM network. Alright so we're getting close to landing here so we better pay attention to make sure that uh, with our final approach here is coming in correctly. So it'll call out the uh, altitude when we get to a thousand feet and also at 500 and there because we're also connected to live traffic 
<laughs> you, you always have to wonder if there's actual real the aircraft that are landing and taking one, off at zero. the same time you're trying to come in, and even though you have clearance. All right, so we had the 300 uh, called out there. So we're going to remove the speed controls there. I'm coming in a little fast. American 587 exit runway when able. This is on the 456 Super Cross, runway 24 left, contact ground, point six five. Cross, uh, two four left, and uh, ground, uh, point six five. Yeah. So 4181 turn left now, heading 210, contact the departure. To departure, heading 210, south of 4181. All right, so uh, that gives you just a little bit of insight into uh, using air pilot to air traffic control as well as live track as well as hearing actual feedback directly from um, real pilots talking to uh, air traffic control while you're flying. So it helps you tune your ear to understand the proper uh, uh, speech and, and uh, language grammar this has actually a grammar help with it here that uh, you can bring up pretty well any instructions whether you're on clearance or delivery it tells you all the different uh, approach and deliveries and requests or whether it's read back information so it really helps you learn the language of air traffic controller it's a a very worthwhile utility and you wonder how in the world you manage without it all right well i hope you enjoyed your flight and uh happy flying